Hello, my name is David Meany, VP of Technical Sales and Marketing at ECS Inc. International. In this multi-part series, we will look at oscillator design basics. We will cover all the steps required to design and build a functioning oscillator. In the second episode, we will discuss oscillator startup time and reactants in an oscillator circuit. First, let us discuss the basics of startup time. Startup time is the period when an oscillator is first turned on. During this period, there will be instabilities until the oscillator stabilizes. Startup time is usually measured in microseconds, but it's frequency dependent and can be controlled by the feedback loop. The magnitude of the closed loop game has great influence on the startup time. Factors that negatively affect the closed loop gain include low drive level, higher crystal capacitance, and equivalent series resistance. Low gain can cause excessively long startup time, and too high of a gain can cause startup to fail altogether, or overdrive the crystal structure. The ideal gain is dependent on the negative resistance of the oscillator circuit, where the drive must overcome the negative resistance to start up and build the oscillator output. Because of this, the oscillator frequency directly influences the startup time. So the time it takes to circulate the loop is considerably longer for kilohertz oscillators than for megahertz oscillators. Poor gain margin is a common problem in kilohertz oscillators. Because of these issues, careful design is required to match the drive levels to suitable load capacitance and ESR values. Now let us look at reactants. The impedance of quartz changes dramatically with frequency. So much so that all other components can be considered as being in continuous reactants. Consequently, when a crystal unit is used in the feedback loop of an oscillator, the frequency of the crystal unit will regulate itself so that it presents a reactance that satisfies the loop phase gain. An illustration of reactance versus frequency is shown. When looking at the graph, you see it shows that the quartz crystals have two frequencies of zero phases. The initial or lower of the two is the series resonant frequency, commonly abbreviated as F small s. The subsequent or higher of the two frequencies of zero phases is the corresponding or anti-resonant frequency, commonly abbreviated as F small a. Both series and corresponding resonant frequencies appear resistive in an oscillator circuit. At the series resonant point, the resistance is minimal and the current flow is maximal. At the parallel point, the resistance is maximal and the current flow is minimal. Consequently, the parallel resonant frequency should never be used in the governing frequency of an oscillator circuit. A quartz crystal unit can be made to oscillate at any point along the line between the series and parallel resonant points by the inclusion of reactive components, such as capacitors in the feedback loop of the oscillator circuit. This can be seen as the line marked capacitive loading. The frequency resulting from the additional capacitance is higher than the series resonant frequency. It is usually called the parallel frequency. However, it is lesser than the factual parallel frequency. Since there are two frequencies of zero phases associated with quartz crystal unit, there are two types of oscillator circuits. These circuits are defined by the types of crystals to be used. They are either series resonant or parallel resonant. Stay tuned for our videos on the differences in series and parallel oscillator circuit or visit us on the web at ecsxtal.com. Thank you.